Chewy here in the lab for part four of Rover Build. And in a continual striving for improvement, I have received some feedback from my fellow robot builders, and there are a few matters that I'd like to clarify. So first of all is the use of thread locker on plastics. Uh, on this type of plastic, which I believe to be glass-filled nylon, I have found it to be pretty inert. However, on certain plastics, uh, especially polycarbonate, uh, this is the Marc Laurent brand, um, the thread locker can sometimes have a very detrimental effect. So I will do an experiment to demonstrate. I have this brand new piece of polycarbonate. I just drilled this hole, as you might do if you were going to use a threaded fastener with it. And I'll pull off the protective plastic. And now I'll just put a little bit of this thread locker um, like around the hole, like you might do if you were sloppily applying it. So now we'll just set this aside, the motor and the taping of the vent holes. So if I hold this right to the camera, you can see that in there there is a little plastic fan that spins around and uh, moves some air through the motor when it's a drill to help with cooling. However, if you look right below the fan, those are the magnets, and those love to attract metal shavings and dust and other sorts of debris. And uh, I have found that in practice with robots, the duration is so short that it's better to just tape up these vent holes. So like in the other video, I just put a quick wrap of tape on there. Um, and again, um, you can leave this on just for the construction phase and then remove it when you actually use them or I just choose to leave it on. Just to be very clear, I do not consider this good enough for robot combat. Uh, they're made to a very low price point and at that point something has to give and that is the gears inside the gearbox in my experience. So if I contrast this to a slightly higher quality drill, this is a Sears Craftsman. It's made up of essentially the exact same parts. However, all of these gears are hardened, as well as this mid-stage carrier and also, most importantly, the output carrier down in there. Again, to clarify, with this drill, the Harbor Freight, the failure point that I have seen is these pins down in there loosen up because the motor is being used, and not as it is intended, doing lots of forward and reverse shifting. These pins tend to loosen up and they either shear off or just fall out. Uh, so, in conclusion, I find the slightly more expensive drills are still suited for combat. And those would be Sears Craftsman, the Ryobi, and Black and Decker. Um, this, of course, is speaking only for inexpensive single-speed drills. It does not include the higher quality two-speed drills such as like Makita or DeWalt. So uh, essentially we are replacing the drill chuck with a wheel. Uh, the wheels that I have chosen for Rover Build are Surplus wheels from Surplus Center. I believe they are Jarvis brand and they are roughly four inches. The venerable Colson caster wheel, which has been a mainstay for robot combat, is actually far superior in terms of durability and grip. However, the bore is roughly 5 eighths of an inch and does not have any material left to tap. The most important thing when choosing a wheel is you want something with a bore with uh, less than 3 eighths of an inch. Uh, these have a quarter inch bore, which we will drill out. 
So here I have my example cordless drill and I will merely unscrew this drill truck to reveal the threaded spindle. This spindle is 3 8 inch in diameter with 24 threads per inch. We'll need a 3 8 24 tap. To make clearance for that we will use a tap drill. This is a Q size. This about $70 Harbor Freight drill press lasted me for many years and has made many a hole on many a robot. And this is actually the tool we will be demonstrating with today. To quote famous builder, be sure to read, understand, and follow manufacturer's recommendations for your power tools. And remember, there is no more important safety rule than to wear these safety glasses. Okay, so we've put the Q size drill bit in the drill chuck and we've made sure that we're not going to drill into the table. Uh, as you can see, this drill press is just large enough so that the wheel fits in this hole and sits flat on the table. If that's not the case, I've found a roll of duct tape is ideal to uh, sit this up and uh, keep the wheel flat and perpendicular to the table. So, step one is to drill this out for the Q size. Easy. Now, here comes the trick. We will remove the drill bit. And we will install the 3 8 24 tap in the chuck. Again, choking up so that we're clamping on the round part, not the square shank. And just gently tighten down on that. Now, we are not going to power this. We're just going to use the drill press to maintain the uh, perpendicularity of the tap to the wheel. So slowly crank it down and so after it gets that first bite it will self feed and once it's started to the point where it will not uh, become crooked you can actually uh, just pick the wheel off the table and turn it by hand like this um, now this is quite possible to do with a hand drill or even by hand if you take your time to set it up, uh, making sure that it's uh, perfectly perpendicular in two planes using uh, something like a uh, small square, making sure that it's uh, square that way and that way and doing this by hand, but a drill press makes everything so much easier. That a little more. So you want to go all the way through this bore. Oh, sir. Okay, and the tap is just poking out on the bottom. So the entire bore is threaded all the way through. Now just Go the other way to unthread the wheel. And the wheel comes off. If you take a look in the bore, you can see it is threaded. We'll take our newly threaded wheel and we'll gently start the wheel on the spindle making sure that it's still square because the uh, hub is just made of plastic it's fairly easy to cross thread or start the wheel crooked on here so take some care with the first couple of turns and we'll just keep turning that until it hits the bottom of the thread and make sure it's really on there. Now we'll run this and see how well we did.
So there is a little bit of wobble in there, but for our robot purposes, that's fine. Um, now again, if you don't have the drill press, uh, any amount of care you use in setting up that operation will pay dividends here as the wheel will run more true and the robot will drive more straight. So now that we have our wheel threaded onto the drill chuck, we will take the uh, left-handed 5mm chuck screw and a number 10 washer and we will lock the wheel onto the drill hub. Remember this screw is uh, left-hand threaded, so we will pretend that we are removing the screw, uh, turning it anti-clockwise to tighten it. The wheel is threaded onto the spindle in a clockwise fashion, and this screw retains it in an anti-clockwise fashion. So the wheel is locked onto the drill. So now that we have a somewhat working drill wheel, time for stupid fun.